Hi there. Welcome to the show. I'm Doug Johnson, and this is The Business of Life. Each month, we share a person's strategies with you as the person is interviewed here for your benefit. Strategies for success is what we're calling it. Our guest today is Dee Wolk, a friend of mine, a new friend of mine, and she is a woman who has always been ahead of her time. She is an entrepreneur, and she is the founder of a company called the No Diet Weight Solution. Dee is an extraordinary person, one who truly, truly has a purpose in life. Dee, thanks so much for being here today. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. So Dee, you and I only go back a short time, but I feel like we've known one another forever. Right. So recently, you and I were having a discussion and you shared with me very generously a copy of your grandson's essays and thoughts. And I'd like to read to you one of those that really struck me and I'd like to get your thoughts on his thoughts. The meaning of life is simply to give life a meaning. What does that mean to you? How can those of in our audience use that to their benefit? That wraps around everything, Doug. Okay. How do you give life meaning? Mm -hmm. It all starts with you. Okay. Everything in life starts from the inside out. So the very first thing, you have to have a relationship with yourself that's positive. You have to become your own best friend. Okay. This is powerful. You are not the sports car you drive. You're not the titles you have. You're not the successes that you have been able to have. And when you realize this, you got to lift up your glass Aha. and toast yourself. Okay. Because you are an extraordinary person. And it's time to have a love affair with yourself. And that's powerful. It is. Very powerful. And it's overlooked in our society. Mm -hmm. It's overlooked. You know, when you become your own best friend, you will never be lonely. True. And you will never be abandoned. Mm -hmm. That's great, isn't it? It is. It is. Now, Dee, you operate a very successful business. And you and I were discussing your background. And there is much tragedy and adversity. And today you are such a positive person. And so if you could briefly share with our audience your authentic story. Where are you from? What are you about? And how did you get to be the positive person you are today? The, the founder and the, the owner of a, an international corporation that does good for thousands of people. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, We're not brought up to be able to reinvent ourselves. This is something we have to learn. What is the biggest cause of stress? Life, mm -hmm. right? Right. I had great cha uh, tragedy early in, l in life when my first husband, who was happened to be 20 years older than I, but looked mm -hmm. like a movie star. <laughs> and um, he dropped dead of a massive heart attack at 
48. Wow. And he had, he came from Manhattan. He had a valet dry cleaning business in Manhattan with an uncle. Mm -hmm. Life was good. He was the love of my life. Mm -hmm. Very romantic. What I didn't know was he wasn't a good businessman. Ah. And I didn't know a thing about business. Mm -hmm. I was a wife, mm -hmm. a mother, and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I had a three-day part-time job in an art gallery. And when Joe died so suddenly, I had a mortgaged house, mm -hmm. no savings, no life insurance, and when I found out, the business was in debt. Okay. So this was my choice. Welfare mm -hmm. or dry cleaning lady. I wasn't going on welfare. So dry cleaning lady. And everybody said, dry cleaning lady? You never mm -hmm. saw anything dry cleaned in your life. True. But I was determined to survive. And I reinvented myself. And three weeks after Joe died, two men came in after closing with a double-barreled shotgun Whoa. and robbed me. And my mother said, you can't go back there. Mm -hmm. You'll get killed. And I say, if I don't go back tomorrow, I will never go back. And I knew right. that. I'd be too scared to ever go back. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I took a carpenter. I had him board up the back windows and put bars on the windows, changed the locks. Mm -hmm. And I hired a big security guard to come in at 4 and walk me to my car at 7. Mm -hmm. I was determined. Okay. And, you know, what separates winners from losers? Action. Right. Action. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. It's all about action. So I studied, because I'm a researcher by nature, and I studied what, what are the tools that are going to help me run this business. Mm -hmm. And I learned about visualization. Okay. And affirmations. And I remember one time, I used to be afraid of a bug. If there was a bug in the house, I'd put a pail over it, <laughs> wait for my husband to come home. The basement was flooded. The pilot went out. The equipment wouldn't work. Had to light the pilot. Mm -hmm. And there were rats floating around the top. Nobody would go down. So I went out and got fishing boots. And I sat down by the sewing machine. Uh huh. And I wrote down 50 times, I can do this. I will do this. I can do this. I will light this boiler and I will be fine. So that's the affirmation. Yes, mm -hmm. 50 times. This is powerful. People don't realize how powerful this is because your mind believes whatever you tell it. Okay. True or false. Mm -hmm. Do you know how powerful that is? Very. I, in, you know, I've taught thousands of people my no diet program. Mm -hmm. And I feel the tragedy is that people don't realize how powerful they are. It's sad, it's tragic. I think that's true. It's tragic. Mm -hmm. So I ran the business, I paid all the debts off, um, but I was an emotional eater. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some of your li listeners will relate to this because Believe it or not, Doug, 87% of my clientele are emotional eaters. 
I believe it. Mm -hmm. I ate because I was tired, mm -hmm. bored, anxious, frustrated, lonely, sad, happy, celebrating. Right. Past the refrigerator. Everybody else was eating. I worked too hard. I didn't work hard enough, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and I think we all can relate to that. Right. So I gained 42 and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And my past was one diet after another. I went on everything. Mm -hmm. Even took the shots of a pregnant cow. Oh, geez. Might grow another head right in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything. I'd lose weight while I was on the diet, mm -hmm. but then I went off of it. Maybe I finally got into the dress for the wedding. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then gained so it all back. Mm -hmm. Over ate the foods I was deprived of, then went back to the way I ate before. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a diet that ever helped me with the foods I ate before. So I'd gain it back, and usually more. Mm -hmm. Well, I finally sold the business, and it wasn't easy because it was hard to do that mm -hmm. for me. Sure. Because believe it or not, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> the dry cleaning. Lady. I liked it. Uh huh. But I got an offer and I sold it, and here I was, forty-two and a half pounds overweight. So I went on a seven hundred calorie di day diet, mm -hmm. which is so depriving. And I stayed on it two months and I only lost nine pounds. So I went Depressing off of it. Depressing too. Oh, very. <laughs> and I went off of it and I said, okay, I'm going to watch everything I eat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write it down. I'm not gaining it back. And I did. But I gained back 18 pounds oh. in less than two months. <laughs> and that's changed my life because my pattern of behavior was to panic okay. and look for a diet I hadn't been on before. Something changed. I said, I'm done. I'm done with dieting. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? There's no help out there. Maybe I should give up. Sure would be easier. Mm -hmm. My friends don't care that I'm overweight. They like me anyway. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I came up with fat and happy will never be compatible for me. <laughs> so I decided to find a solution to my weight problem, never, ever thinking I would teach anybody. Mm -hmm. It took me two years. I studied the body. And when I say it took me two years, I never gave up. I never took my eye off of what I wanted to accomplish. You've heard about the Wright brothers, haven't you, Doug? I have. Did they ever give up? No. How about Thomas Edison? You heard about him? Mm -hmm. Did he ever give up? No. What about Mark Anderson? Did you no, hear about him? I'm not sure that I have. He gave up. Okay. You don't ever give up when you want to achieve something. This is what I learned, mm -hmm. and this is what I teach. I found that the body is smarter than I am. I couldn't believe really? it. And that it was so simple. Mm -hmm. And. 10% of my clientele are doctors, and they'll sit across with me where you are, and they'll say, D, this is so simple. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, then why haven't you thought of it? Right. <laughs> it is. It's how we're designed. And when you go against what you, how you're designed, mm -hmm. side effects, not going to work. Can I have my car? You sure may. I love this car. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Ferrari, right Doug. A Ferrari. Ah. I bought it at Toys R Us. 
this taught me a lot. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The styling, the detail, the color. Right. It's, magna it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. right? It is. This magnificent, expensive machine is empty inside. Mm -hmm. I've emptied it. This magnificent machine can't go forward, can't sustain itself. Mm -hmm. I learned that everything happens from the inside out. Okay. That's where we have to start. Mm -hmm. That's where our power is, to become your own best friend. And that is what's going to propel your life, mm -hmm. whether it's privately or in business. Interesting. Do you have any questions? Well, I love the car, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I think the analogy is, is very, very true. <clears throat> and. Um, I, I really like the concept of being one's own best friend. I mean, that is so powerful. It is. And it is. Keeping things simple is, is another thing. The simpler, the better. And um, very true. You know, it it just is really uh, your story is very very interesting. I think one of the things that um, it brings to my mind, is, and you've talked about this a little bit, is perception yes. and the perception of other people when you took over the dry cleaning business and you know you've never done that before and you know the dry cleaning lady brings to mind a perception and we often talk about perception as reality well our perception becomes our reality it does mm -hmm. if you change your perception, you change your reality. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Let me give you an example. A person is eating this marvelous food, and on my system, if you no longer have any hunger, and you have no sense of fullness, and you stop eating at that point, and there's a system that tells you when, you start dropping weight, okay? Now, you're eating this marvelous food, and you have kind of a net. You're kind of a negative person. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sun is out, and you say, you know, it's going to rain later. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, negative. So you're eating this great food, and you reach a five on the no diet weight solution system. And you say, I'm not hungry anymore, but there's still food on my plate. Right. I feel deprived if I can't continue eating. That is a perception. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Which becomes real. Okay. How about the person that is positive? It's raining, storming, and she says, there's going to be a rainbow later. Mm -hmm. And she's eating this incredible food. It is the best. And she reaches a point where she's not hungry anymore mm -hmm. and has no sense of fullness. And she'll start losing weight. And she says, oh my goodness, I'm a five. This food is the best. And there's still food on my plate. But if I continue eating the rest of this food, I'm depriving myself of the way I want to look and feel. So the real deprivation is to continue eating. Okay, so there's a flip in mindset there. That's right, and it's powerful. And you can do this in any arena. Interesting. Perception, changing your perception changes your reality. Following up on this, because we as children, when yeah. I was growing up, 
we were always told, you know, there are hungry children in India, so absolutely eat your food, and we were all members of the Clean Plate Club. So how does one change mindset to, to change that perception, as you just did, to say and be positive about it? Um, Good question. There's three power tools in life. Okay. Want, ready, and commitment. Okay. People call me every day and they'll say, Dee, I want to lose my excess weight, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. But my very next question is, are you ready to make some of the changes to make this happen? Okay. Ready is a key. You have to be ready and then make a commitment to what you want to change. You know, I tell this to people all the time. We're not born winners. We're not born losers. We're all born choosers. Okay. What do you choose? And what is your trade-off? For what you choose. Mm -hmm. Can you live with it? Can you be comfortable with it? Is this what you want? Interesting. So if you choose to make some changes, and you're, then you're ready. Then you're good to go. Yeah. It's very, it's very important that you be ready. Mm -hmm. Is there a gauge to know when, when you're ready? I mean, other than you're ready to make the commitment. But is there something in your mind that says, like you did, Yeah, enough. I think you get to the point, I, there will be people that will never be ready. Okay. They're looking for the next diet that comes out. <laughs> exactly. The pill, the shot, whatever. They don't want to think. And you know something, Doug? You know what it is? It's mind over batter. Mm -hmm. It's all here. It's not deprivation. Deprivation doesn't, we're, we're not designed to be deprived of what we choose to eat. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll do it for a while because we're desperate. We've got to look good for the whatever. So if we change that mindset, then... This has to be changed. Okay. It's so simple. Mm-hmm. But there are people that never will be ready. Mm -hmm. And then there are people like I was. I'm done. I'm done. This isn't working. This isn't a lifestyle. And you know, what's really important to me, my passion, is that as they, you know, everybody wants to lose weight. That comes to me. That's understandable. Mm-hmm. But as they're losing this weight, they're creating a lifestyle that promotes wellness. And this is what's important to me. Because I'll ask people in a class, what is wellness? Somebody define wellness? There's silence. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, come on, guys. Can you buy a box of it at Nordstrom's? And mm -hmm. they laugh. Well, if you can't buy it or find it, or if you could, you couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. how do you get it? You get it by living a lifestyle that promotes it. And isn't it time you stop digging your grave with your teeth? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. Your body's a temple. And it's the only home you will ever, ever live in. Take care of it. Right. And that's why all of this is so, so very important. Yes. Very, very important. Quite some very, very interesting concepts. Dee, we have just a moment left. Um, oh, I'm enjoying any, this. <laughs> oh, I am too, absolutely. 
Any last words of wisdom for our audience? Believe in yourself. Become your own best friend. Never, ever take your eye off of what you want to achieve. Three very, very solid, easy to remember ideas. Important. And our lives will be so much better for oh, that. Oh, God, yes. You'll learn to fly again. Mm hmm. Dee, thank you so very much for being here today. It has been a joy and such important concepts thank you. for our audience. Again, thank you. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you. I teach part-time at several local colleges, and in one of my classes last quarter, I gave the assignment of a final presentation to be given to the whole class. Because the class was so large, I decided to divide it in half, and half the class would present the first half, half the class the second half. Students then asked me, well, Obviously, if I present in the first half, I don't have to be here for that second class. My response, absolutely you do. Out of respect for me and for your fellow classmates, you will be here for that second class. And if you don't, you will lose all of the points that you earned in your presentation. Guess what? They got it. I was so pleased because the class had 100% attendance in each class. So sometimes it pays to explain. Respect is huge, and we need to keep talking about that with our younger folks. <laughs>